Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball pitch and bat repair video for you this evening. The final evening of the great year of our Lord 2022. So, we got to try to fix this hit and run tonight. We've pretty much got it working, everything's cool, but we've got to do some cosmetic stuff. So, one of the things that we need to do, we need to remount this uh, channel here that holds the back door on and we don't have a back door so we gotta make a back door out of wood. The original was metal um, so they sound a little different when you put wood on them but the thing that the the difference in the sound is that it muffles it a little bit which people actually kinda like for their house so it ends up working out alright. You can get the metal ones some of the metal ones online if you look around they carry some of them at some of the places but I don't know if they've got a four player or a two-player Williams from 1970 pitch and bat. Eh, they might have it. Maybe. It may be the same as that student prints over there. See it over there? What do you think? Do you think the one on that one will fit on that? But if I did that, then the student prints wouldn't have one. I don't know. I think we'll make one for this one. Okay, so we got to do that. There's also this little piece of work here. Look at this. This thing is like a from mica, and it's been broke off. So what I'm going to do is we're going to fix this with Bondo to try to get it looking more square and flat. And then I'm going to try to just color match the corner in. It won't be perfect, but it'll look better than that. Now, a lot of times we get people explaining to us the expensive way to do it. So I understand that there is a more expensive and more time-consuming way to do it. Like you could take that all off, do the same Bondo, and then replace the entire Formica with the wrong color. Because you're not going to get that color Formica from 1970. Um, yeah, I could do that, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to Bondo this up a little bit, and then we're going to paint it, get it as good as we can, and we're going to leave it, and out the door she goes. <laughs> and then we have these buttons here that are kind of like a chrome look. They're metallic, and I'd like to get them better. So we're going to hit those with a wire brush and see if we can clean it up without destroying our Formica. And then we need a couple bolts to put in here, and just generally clean the thing up, put some locks on it, put the glass back in it. And then, on this back glass here, oh look, it says we're uh, over in game over. We must have stopped it in the middle of the game. This back glass needs some serious work, so we're going to do that on this video. Basically, everywhere there is a translucent area, it has messed up. Now this, see how that looks? You might not be able to see, but... Yeah, there you go. See how that looks? It's almost like somebody's repainted it or something at some point. I don't know. It may just be filth on the back of it. But a lot of the areas, like this guy's shirt, the whole hit and run part, look how that's all flaked away. So people blame that on the, the bulbs that are in it, but I think it's just the paint that they used. Because it does it even in areas that don't have much lighting, you know. So I don't know. Maybe it's just the heat. Maybe they're all right. So we've got to mess with that. So we're going to have to repaint some of that and just see if we can get it to look a little better than it does now. We're not going to make it look brand new or anything. But I think we can probably improve upon it. So, let's get started on it. The first thing we're going to do with the back glass is we're going to take it out and we're going to clear coat the back of it so that it doesn't flake off anymore. So we're going to clear the whole freaking thing with Triple Thick. Triple Thick is a product used to glaze pottery. It's actually called Triple Thick. Now, if you want any of that stuff, you can go to our website and order it. It's on, You can go to lionsarcade.com. There is a parts page up at the top. Uh, with a bunch of our links to stuff that we use whenever we do repairs and the triple thick is on there we just we paint it on the back and basically they call it that because it's thicker than paint it's three times as thick as paint that's why they call it triple thick so you spray that stuff on there and it makes like a glaze on the back of it and it any if there's any pieces that are flaking off or about to go bye bye it basically gets them stuck where they're not going to come off uh, originally this was silk screened onto the back of the glass and it's held on for quite a while but it's been 52 years 
That's a long time, people. So uh, some of it is flaked off, and we're going to clear it to get it where it won't flake off any worse, and then we'll try to correct the places that have that, uh, flaked off. Basically, our goal will be to just get it where you can't see the light bulbs shining through it anymore. We, we're not going to be able to get it perfect, but we'll get it looking a lot better than it does now. So uh, that's the biggest part. So if we get that right, um, the thing's already playing pretty good. We'll pretty much have this thing finished right here before New Year's. No, so we got till 12 o'clock. It's already, oh man, it's already dark. Oh boy, I better get on it. Whew, maybe if I didn't talk so much, I could get it done quicker. All right, folks, so we cleared it. You can see, see the shiny reflective surface now? It's because I pulled that stuff on there thick. Triple thick. It's triple thick, too. Here, I'll give you a close-up of it. So you can see it's made like a... It's glazed it, basically. Now, you got to be careful using this stuff. People have asked me, should they do it on their glass that's in perfect shape? No, I wouldn't. I'd leave it alone. If it's in perfect shape, just keep treating it the way it's been treated. It'll probably do you right. This one's not in perfect shape, though, so it's largely damaged, you know, so it, I'm not really going to damage it anymore, and we don't really know the long term what's going to happen with these. So it could be that 20 years from now, all this cracks off or something. I don't think it will, and I think people have been using triple thick for 20, 25 years, so hopefully everything will be cool, but... Uh, if you've got a really nice glass or one that's just got a little couple minor spots, I don't think I'd mess with it. But one like this where it's just got major problems, we're definitely going to mess with it. So, let me, uh, I'll go get our paint, and I'll show you the paint that we use, and then we'll figure out uh, what colors we need, and we'll just start going at it. On one hand, it's a little more forgiving, because since the lights are, basically, when the lights light this up, so let's take this big H here, for example. When the lights light this up, Everywhere that I paint it, there's going to be problems. So here's the problem. If there's no paint on it right now, if it's, tra if it's transparent, when I put the paint on that area, it will be a certain thickness. So let's just say one mil. I don't know. I'm, I have no idea how thick a mil is, but we'll just say it's one mil, right? So it's one mil. And then right next to it is a spot that's already red where the paint didn't flake off. And I just painted over it too. So that spot is two mils. So when the light shines through it, you will see that. You know, more light will shine through the part that only has one mil than will the part that has two mils. So because of that, you can't get rid of all of the damaged areas. You'll still see it. It's just it'll be the right color or similar to the right color. Um, so the areas that the light shines through. Uh, more easily that you painted that were transparent will be a slightly lighter color than the areas that have the original paint plus the paint you just put on on the back of it. There's really, in my opinion, there's no real way around that. The only way to really fix it better would be to take off all the old paint. I, I'm not doing that. First, so let's say that we tried to take off the H, like the paint on the H. So maybe you could use a razor blade to scrape it right up to that line, but you're never going to get that line perfect, and it's a ton of work. And then at the end of the day, it looks like a, a you you cut and pasted, you know. I just don't have the skill to do it. So what I do is I take a paintbrush, and I just paint red on it, or whatever color it needs to be. And then whenever it illuminates, it's not going to be right. It's not going to be perfect, and you're you're going to see brush strokes and everything else. But it's going to look better than it did. So that's what we're attempting to do, right? Whenever you look at it and it's it's the paint has cracked off and you can see the bulbs behind it, that doesn't look good, in my opinion. So we're about to do a big arts and crafts project where you basically just paint by numbers. You know, it's like a coloring book. So all of those were red or whatever they are. We'll figure it out here in a minute. And so you get a red that looks pretty similar and paint those in. And then you find where they used red in other places. One of the interesting things about it is that since they were silk screened, they did certain colors at a time. So they would do all the red and then all the green. And so there's usually only six or seven colors on it. 
sometimes when you get into the later back glasses, some of them were really complex and they would have like, I think we did a Bally flip-flop. We didn't have to paint it, thankfully. We were just admiring it. The Bally flip-flop, didn't it have like 16 or 17 colors on it? Something just crazy like that. So they would, on flip-flop, they, they would have like a purple and then a dark purple. And they'd have a green and a dark green. Tan and a dark brown. Uh, blue and a dark blue. And on and on and on. And it just, every color had two shades. And so there were like 16 or something like that uh, layers of, of, of screening on them. And if you don't know how they screen print stuff, basically when this thing was new, there was, and I'm not an expert on this, but this is pretty much how it was. They cut the glass and they had just a transparent piece of glass. And then uh, they had a screen, a literal screen, with a, uh, uh, a hole cut out for just the red, we'll say. Or I guess they probably did black first. I think they usually do that. Just all the black lines. And they would lay the screen down and then put black ink on it, squeegee it out, let it dry, and then do, you know, another 500 of them, or how many of these they were making, 1,000 of them. And then after all the black ink was down, they would go back and add in the light green. And same thing, they would have a screen with the light, all of the places that need to be light green, squeegee the paint out, and then do a 1,000 of them, on and on and on. So, you get the idea. So, I went and grabbed the, uh, somebody came in. I went and grabbed the paint. And I have all these little hobby bottles of acrylic paint. Now, we do the back glass just a little bit different than we do the play field. I don't usually mix paint for the back glass. I just get it as close as I can. Because, like I was saying, when the light shines through it, it's going to be the wrong color anyway. But you try to get the hue the same and blah, blah, blah. So, for, like, for instance, on the red, I've just got like 10 different reds. And the bottom of the bottle is a pretty good approximation of how it's going to look when it's done. It's a little lighter than it than it's going to look, but I don't know, the camera's not really picking up the differences all that much. Let me see if I can get a couple that are very different. There you go. That's, well, it's pretty different. I wonder if it's because of... They're all very different. <laughs> and you just mess with it and mess with it until you get one that looks very similar to the glass, uh, what you're seeing on the front of the back glass. And then I take a little paintbrush, and I just paint in all of the areas that are red, that look messed up. Now on the big areas, unfortunately, you're going to see all of the brush strokes. You don't have to stay within the lines either, because all of this part that's gray, light doesn't shine through. So you won't be able to see any of that. So let me see if I can lift it up without breaking it. What do you think? Can I do it? So I, I touched up a little bit there. A pretty good match, just right out of the bottle. I redid this guy's sock. Now, something like this, I went pretty thick on it, and it looks perfect from the front, pretty much, like the guy's sock I repainted. Looks pretty much perfect. But the problem is, when the light shines through it, his sock is going to look darker than the rest of them, because now it has two layers of paint on it. Okay. And then the hit and run. It looks a lot better. It looks red and it just looks like it has this kind of mottled look to it. What you're seeing is all of the brush strokes combined with all of the pieces that were missing and you know, but it looks pretty presentable. So when it's turned off, it's going to look a lot better than it did. When it's turned on, the lights behind it, not so much. You'll see here in a little bit. Uh, I repainted the six on the back of the guy's shirt. Repainted his hat. The two needed just a little dollop. And then his shin guard. Um, and that was it for the red. So there wasn't a ton of red other than, obviously, the whole title. Now... Um, you just go through and do that. And every one that you do will make it look a little better, a little better, especially when it's not turned on. So, you know, the things usually aren't turned on 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. Uh, for the time that they are turned on, then 
Eh, you'll see. Looks all right. It's not. This is not a perfect solution, though. But it's a better solution than just leaving it. I think. Uh, and you, you could try to get a new glass. If we might be able to talk the guys at BG Resto into making one, but they take. It takes a while, and it's a great company. But it just, it takes a while. And we're trying to finish this tonight, aren't we? Didn't we say we wanted to finish it before uh, the new year? So that's what we're doing. Okay, so uh, let me pick another color, and we'll just keep working through it. So light blue, dark blue, got a big mess going on. So here's the colors we've used so far. Red alert. Uh, sailing sky. And cerulean blue. The ever-present cerulean blue. It's just such a beautiful word. I don't even know if that's how you pronunciate it, but... Okay, so a lot of the light blue in there needed touched up. Look at the, I always love the, the art of all of this stuff. Okay, so that part where he's swinging the bat, we haven't done yet, but as he swings it, it creates this big kind of swash here because they have lights behind it that say Grand Slam. Okay, and you don't see those until they light up. But look what they did. See how they drew a couple black lines in there to represent his leg? Because it's transparent, so you should be able to see through that swoosh there to see the batter behind it. So they actually drew it in just a little bit, just a hint of it. Very cool. Whoever was the artist was the man or the woman. One of the two, or maybe another. I don't know. I hear there's extra now. Okay, and I did the dark blue. And we're not trying to fix every little thing. We're just trying to, you know, so like this two here, it's still got a couple little teeny spots. We're just trying to get the main stuff and just make it come together a little bit better. Right? So we got that. So let's do, uh, I guess it's time to do uh, green. Yeah, some of this light green. There's like a yellow and a light green. So like in an instance like this, it, it it depends on how, if you're trying to do it perfect, you would draw that little missing black line back in, and then you would do the yellow, uh, and then the green, and then this peach or salmon color is also the color of the, uh, the guy's face and his hands, you know, and you just go through and just do it as perfect as you can. It's also the color of the uh, catcher's mitt, or the umpire's um uh, uh, protective equipment there. So it's also actually the color of the bat. Hmm. Are there two colors there? This is when it gets confusing. Okay, so the guy's hand is the same color as that behind it. It just looks a little different because they got so much black shading on it. And it, like I was saying earlier, they silk screened it. So because of that, they didn't use a hundred different colors. They can't use that many. So they've got a, like a light green and then a dark green, or a medium green. Okay. But that color is not the same as that yellow over there. So there's kind of two greens, and there's two salmon pinkish colors. Right? The one is actually a yellow, but it kind of looks kind of pinkish. So that's two, four, red makes five, uh, light blue is six, dark blue is seven. What are we missing? Uh, dark brown is eight. And then black and white's ten. So it's ten colors. So we've done three. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I think that's right. I think that's cool. Okay, so uh, now we need to do, I guess, the... Yeah, the brown is confusing, though. I guess it's the same color. That's all the same color as the hand, like the, the skin. Is that the same? Yeah, that's the same, right? I don't know, maybe it's a little off.
Hmm. It's a little, maybe a little different, but. So is that different? Yeah, I guess so, right? Yeah, that's two different colors. Well, no, the one just has the gray backing behind it. That's what's going on. They've created an extra color by just having this, we'll call it tan, be translucent, and the one next to it have a gray backing. So, uh, hmm, no, well, because my problem is right here. Is the bat the same color as his hand? You know what? I think it's close enough. I can't tell. I can't tell if it's faded. Hmm. I guess nothing says we have to make them the same color. Let me, I'll mix a, um, let me see if I can make, find a brown that's close to that. And I guess we'll just see what different colors we've got. If we've got two different colors that are similar, we'll do it. So let's, uh, let's see if we can get the bat looking better. Okay, so little by little. So I did use two colors. One for his hands and his face, and then one for the bat. Okay. And then the what I used for the bat also was used for their protective gear where it had flaked. Um, and then this whole bottom is that color, so a couple little pinholes that were there. And then there were two greens light green and bright green <laughs> uh so put them in just a little hint of green over here and then some black so uh i'll show you the colors that we used we used sour apple and we also used yellow citron and then on to the browns. The bat color was a honey brown. The skin color actually was an antique gold and it seemed pretty close. And then of course lamp ebony black. And then I also I mixed up a brown. I had some like some burgundy and I put some black in it and it got kind of close but it's not perfect. Okay, so we're going to let it dry just a little bit, and then we'll slide it in the machine, and we'll see how it looks in the machine. Okay, it dried a little bit. I put it back in, cleaned off the front of it. I haven't cleaned that lift channel yet. It's still all rusty, but we'll get that looking better. What do you think? Much more presentable, I believe. I like the 3D drawing like I just I like how they drew it very cool boy slinging that ball isn't he it's like he's throwing his arm out of whack okay now this guy see how he looks a little sloppy so it's like oh you didn't do a very good job touching up that green there Come, come on, Ronnie. The green's not that good. Well, I didn't touch him up. That's how it looks, people. That's factory. <laughs> Look at his knee. Look at his knee pad. Yellow and green on the same knee pad. See his hand, his arm there. And you know the 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 batter. Look, you want to see something amazing. Look at the definition that came back in his face just from paint, repainting the back of it, skin tone. You can see everything that's supposed to be there. It looks correct now. Now if you get really close... You can see that the issues still remain, but we have disguised them a little bit. It took about two hours. What do you think? Okay, so the next one is this one. Are we gonna? Oh boy! Oh, I don't think I. I don't think I can do it. Yeah, I'm not gonna do this one. It's just too far gone. 
If it's this far gone, I can't do it. It's just not going to look right no matter what I do. We are going to fix it, but this one's getting a new back glass. It's just how it has to be, okay? Okay, so, yeah, that, that's a good way to look at it, okay? Let's do it like this. That's what we started with. That's what we've got now. Deal with it, folks. It looks great. Look at it. It's perfect. It's flawless. Now, let's look at it lit up. Not so flawless. Looks all right. You can see down here, I got that decent, but it's it just you know you can see where it's been touched up. And then the, uh, this guy doesn't look quite so good anymore as this guy. His face turned out pretty decent. That's not bad. The bat, not bad. Kind of even looks wood with the spottled finish. His spottled a word. There's my six I painted in on his back. It came out pretty good. His hat came out pretty good. The straps on his catcher's uh, uh, mask came out pretty good. Those straps came out all right. The, the brownish purple whatever that I made looks all right. Oh, the blue. The blue came out decent. See all the little touch-ups there? So I think we took it from about a three to about a six and a half. That's where I'd put it. It's not a 10. It's not a nine. I'd feel bad if I told somebody it was an eight. I kind of want to say it's a seven, but I think other people want to say it's a six. So we're at six and a half, folks, all right? That's where we're at, all right? We're at people, come on now. It's not a five, people, it's not a five. Come on now, it's a six and a half at least. All right, so I think we're good with the back glass. I gotta clean the back grass trim. Gotta make a back door for it. We gotta clean the buttons. Gotta fix the side there. And then we gotta play it. Let's play ball! It's viewer mail time. Look at all the projects we've been working on. Staple gun, paint, piece of a 4600 monitor fly back from a K7000 look it's made in China I can't it was, I can't get American ones Bondo Wells Garner 4900 chassis speaker Milwaukee baby um Gugom, a fluke multimeter, an open can of black paint, Gorilla Glue, Joe's been working again, he, he, he works hard people, he's been working on 30 things, look at this, someone has sent us some mail, and they have beautiful handwriting. Look at this. We love fan mail. Let me show you what we got. Are you ready? I don't know if you're ready. What do you think it is? You'll never guess. Since you can't possibly guess, I'm just going to show you. It is the manual for Stern's Lightning Pinball Machine. I have a whole stack of paperwork. I mean, hundreds of manuals. So, this will make a great addition. And we have a letter. Now, I'll edit this out if any of it's uh, personal. Here we go. Hello, Joe and Ron. Please find and close the Stern Lightning Manual. I did find it. It was in the it was in the same envelope. 
Don't know if you have that pen, or maybe you'll get one. I do not have one, but I would love to have one. I'll get one eventually. But I figured you might be able to use this long before I would. It was inside one of my Williams pens I purchased years ago, and I just hung on to it in case I ever ran across a lightning pen. Being that I have eight jukeboxes, five pens, three video arcades, let's see, eight, 13, eight, nine, 10, 13, 16, a baby Pac Man, <laughs> and a Pompeii Shuffle Bowler. And with the wife threatening to stab me in my sleep if I try and drag one more machine home. Boy, he got, he got some spice there. See, it was going very... Look at this. Now, let's do this one more time. By the way, I was reading a, some instructions on something. And I had one of the commenters say, Well, you could have read it a lot faster if you did it all at one time. The goal is not to read it as fast as possible, people. Do you understand what's going on here? I've got a present from somebody. Somebody mailed me a present right in time for Christmas. And you want me to speed read it? Why, do, why would I do that? No, I'm savoring it. Come on now. Look what I noticed here. So up here he says, Don't know if you have that pen. Oh, look, it started very traditional. Hello, Joe and Ron. Here, I'll do it with the voice. Hello, Joe and Ron. Please find enclosed a stern lightning manual. Don't know if you have that pen, or maybe you'll get one. But I figured you might be able to use this long before I would. It was inside one of my Williams pens I purchased years ago, and I just hung on to it in case I ever ran across a lightning pen. Being that I have eight jukes, five pens, three video arcades, a baby Pac-Man, and a Pompeii Shuffle Bowler. And with the wife threatening to stab me in my sleep if I try to drag one more machine home. Just kidding. Well, sort of. I'll never need it. Hope you can use it, or maybe know someone who can. If not, you can just give it to Heave Ho. Let me tell you, buddy. I would never give it to Heave Ho. It has found a safe refuge here. We, we keep stuff around here. Take care, Wallace. P.S. I think I was the sump pump guy. Somebody bought a sump pump on, a, on a Amazon. P.S. I think I was the sump pump guy. Been using your Amazon link for all my purchases. As I said, it's the least I can do to repay you for all the videos you put out. Well, Wallace, thank you very much, buddy, for everything. Not just for watching all of our videos. Not just for buying the sump pump using my Amazon link, which is down below, by the way. If you're going to buy anything on Amazon, use our link down below the video and it gives me a tip. But for sending me this wonderful manual, I will cherish it. And I hope that I get the opportunity in the future to get a Stern, who, by the way, I love the old school Sterns. Love them. To get a Stern Lightning pinball machine. Let me find the, let's see if there, look at this, what in the world? Oh, let me see if I can find a playfield diagram in here so I can just show everybody how cool this game is. A lot of times in the manual they will have a diagram that shows you where the rubber rings go. Here we go. Lightning switches. So very traditional down here. Out lanes, in lanes, kickers, flippers. Five drop targets. Double ramps to the top. Hello, Black Knight. A little loop-de-loo here. That might be a captive ball on the top, actually. This may be like a wire form that holds a ball up at the top. Well, maybe. Or maybe that's in there. I don't know. A couple spinners or gates or something. Um, multiple drop targets. Look at all those drop targets. And then two more flippers on the top. Lightning playfield parts. Ooh, and a display in the in the center. Yeah, buddy. 
I'd love to have that one. Okay, I'm going to find one, Wallace. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate you sending it in. We appreciate you thinking of us, especially here at Christmas. <laughs> so we did a little Bondo work, and I've got this light avocado that's pretty close. I think I'm just going to leave it like that. If I, if I try to get it any closer, we're going to miss it. <laughs> I think that's the way to go. Now the buttons, we took a wire brush, I mean a, a wire wheel, and hit them as good as we could. But some of the plating is actually missing, so we can't get it any better. But I think that looks respectable for 50 years old. And this too. It's a little bit pitted, but all in all, much nicer. I think that's about as good as you can get it considering the vintage. So I'm going to carefully try to put a little bit of satin, because this is like a satin finish. I'm going to try to put a little bit of satin clear coat over that. And that may darken it up just a little bit. And we'll see if that looks a little better. But I'm not going to paint the whole thing, just that one little part. Uh, I also cleaned off the back glass lift channel uh, with some sandpaper, because the thing is just, it was you saw how rusted it was. But I think it looks a lot more presentable now. Still not perfect, though. Um, we haven't made the back door yet. But soon. But you know what time it is? It's about time to play it. So I'm going to attempt to do something different than we usually do since it's New Year's Eve. I'm going to see if I can rig up the camera inside of it to where you can see the run unit and let's see how in the world they're making it run past the bases and then back <laughs> that would be cool to see so let's see if i can uh if i can get the camera showing that uh from the inside what do you think uh -huh. it looked a little too light the clear coat made it darker from certain angles you can't even tell uh -huh. what do you think All right, I'm going to try to get it to start, and then we'll see if that thing ever moves backwards. I don't see how it possibly could, but let's see. Anyone? He's running. Okay, he stopped at third. So he didn't go backwards. Okay. One of them ran home. And one of them ran to first and stopped. They didn't go backwards. Here we go. Nope. One ran to first, one ran to second. Okay, there you go. They overran second and they overran third to about the second light and then they ran back. Did it go backwards? They did it again. The guy on third ran backwards. Yeah, they stayed put. Okay, they were they were about halfway down from second to third and from third to home and then ran backwards. Guy stopped at, at third. Okay, the guy, the guy at third ran back to third. All right, so that should that should prove it, what it's doing. But I uh, didn't have any ability to watch it, so interesting, very interesting. So let's uh, reveal the mystery. So here are the lights, and here is the motor that we were just watching, the man motor unit they call it. So the lights all line up, blah, 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 right, and so. Uh, when the first player, runner, or first something, what do we call it? We looked this up before. When the first PR relay comes on, these lights will be shown. But these might be moving, you know, they're definitely moving across the same context. But the lights don't light up because they don't have the second player base runner relay turned on. Okay? 
But these are the only uh, wiring to the lights, so it's only done on this man motor unit. But as you saw, it's going like to here and then drive and then running back so that it lights them up backwards. So uh, the man motor unit rivets on it are what actually drive the light bulbs. So here is that motor. And there is a service jack where you can turn it on and off if you're testing it. And then it goes back and it gets its power if the man motor drive switch is on. So if the man motor drive switch turns on, the motor starts turning. Well, how does it turn backwards? Hmm. So as soon as it starts turning, or at some point, you saw the switches riding on the edge of the little plate there. This switch will close, will turn from here to up here. Okay, and then so once it does that, all of this has power. And if the APP approach relay has not pulled in yet, so you're approaching first base, right? If that has not pulled in yet, the power comes through here, and it turns on the runner index relay because there's a runner running. At the same time, these wipers are turning. So once it gets to there's home, that's first base. Once it gets past mid, so once it gets to the second one, it turns off the turns on the off base relay. You are no longer on base. You've started running. Okay? But then when it gets to a couple more, it turns on the approach relay. So basically, you are approaching you are halfway through, you're approaching first base, or you're approaching second base, or you're approaching third base, or you're approaching home, which isn't shown. I guess maybe that's home. So it turns on the approach relay. Well, when it turns on the approach relay, that switch changes, um, which kills the runner index relay, and throws power up here, which now makes it uh, where the approach relay holds itself on through this switch. Okay. So that switch is turned on and it's got the motor running. All right. So it also sends power down here and as soon as the runner index relay that we were just looking at turns on, it now is throwing power at all down through here, right? So it turns on this man motor relay. Right? Of course, the man motor is running without the man motor relay being on. The man motor relay holds itself on as long as the man motor drive switch is on. Right? Now, if you, get, if you were to score, if the action control relay pulls in, or the strike relay pulls in, or the field out relay pulls in, or fly out, the fly out relay pulls in. So let's say you hit the ball and it one of the fielders, you hit you hit that uh, switch that the fielders have. There was, what, three or four of them? Or if there is a strike, you swing at it, but you miss the ball and it immediately hits like the catcher uh, switch behind, you know, behind the bat. One of those will pull in. Your runner index relay is in. The man motor relay is now holding in power as well, blah, 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 blah. So the lights are moving, right? Lights are moving, but you got a strike. That turns on the return relay. Now remember, the runner index relay, um, hmm, man motor relay will be on as soon as the runner index relay is. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, da, 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 da. yeah, that's right. So as soon as it starts moving, you get a strike. If you get a strike, the return relay comes on immediately. So maybe you're at the third light, okay? If you're, it, it starts moving and one of the field out, the, the uh, fly out relay comes on. One of the fielders caught the relay, I mean caught the ball and it's considered an out. The return relay immediately comes on. The other way is the action control relay comes on uh, as long as the first player is not running, mm -hmm. and as long as the approach relay has not tripped. So as long as you're not halfway through, 
uh, to turn on that approach relay. So any of those conditions will turn on the return relay. Now here's the kicker. When the return relay pulls in, it, it opens this switch which kills the off base relay, the approach relay, the advanced base relay, and the runner index relay. But this switch throws, which, re which reverses the winding of the motor. Absolutely brilliant. Well, it's been a long day, but I think we did it just before New Year's. The last day of 2022, and we got our pitching bat working, I believe. Here, let me show you the uh, back glass, too. Apparently, the Grand Slam thing came on. <laughs> it's pretty cool. It's pretty, I like it. It's pretty cool. Okay, I'm gonna play it a little bit. We'll see if um, I think it's gonna be too easy. That's what I think. But we'll see. The, it was already on zero, so it didn't have to reset them. It's kind of dark too. I don't have this bolted down either, but it's kind of dark too. So uh, you know, if you had one, you might want to do them mods that the kids do these days, where you shine a spotlight down in it. It, you know, it hit the third base guy. Well, I guess I should read the instructions. And this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get real pedantic for the people that, you know, maybe never played baseball back in the day and don't know a couple of the, the rules. Instructions. Insert coin to start game. Insert second coin for two players. Press the left button to pitch. Press the right button to bat. The object of the game is to keep the ball on the field as long as possible. The game plays and scores exactly as baseball. That's all it says. Okay? So, the whole running past the base thing, the way that works in like a, like a Major League Baseball game, we'll just say. So, you have uh, players on one team, players on the other team. They take turns in the inning, so there'll be fielders, and then they'll be at bat. Well, this one doesn't really play exactly like baseball because you're never the fielder on this game. But, you know, we're up to bat. Okay, so the pitcher throws the ball. On well, this particular game, it's always the same speed, and there's no curve ball or anything like that. So whenever you hit it, and it's it's because it's not really doing the same as that other pitch and bat that we played. It doesn't have the same. Um, it's it's just they're trying to turn the, the the loved game of baseball into something that you can play in a coin operated environment. So the other ones, you would get like say a single, or a double, or a triple. Well, real baseball is not really like that. In baseball, really what you do is you hit the ball, and then the fielders try to catch it or try to get to it before you run all the way home. So this one's called hit and run baseball. That's kind of what baseball is all about. You hit the damn ball and then run as fast as you can, right? So usually what happens is you hit the ball, and the fielders are all spaced out in such a way that they can get to the ball usually pretty quick. So if you hit it straight to the pitcher, he's going to grab it and he's going to throw it straight to first base because you're trying to run from home to first. Well, they give you a little um, um, grace running to first. So whenever, whenever you run to first in a real game, you don't have to stop on first. You can run right by it. So you just want to run as fast as you can. And if your foot touches the first base before the um, first baseman touches the first base you're safe okay so you can get tagged with the ball so like if they've got the ball in their glove and they touch you with the glove you're out right um, but you're trying to just get the first base before the before the pitcher touches first base this sounds so confusing now that I'm saying it out loud okay so what usually happens in the game is you'll hit the ball and then it'll somebody will grab it right so if they grab it right out of the air Without it hitting the ground, you're out. Okay? If they if it hits the ground and then they grab it, 
if they throw it to first and the first baseman touches the base before your foot touches the base, you're out. Now, if you're running, 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 and you hit first before he does, and then you run way past here, he can't tag you out or anything. You made it, okay? Now, this changes on the other bases. So let's say you got a guy on first now, and then the next guy gets up, and he hits the ball. And so he hits, so that guy got a single. He's only on the first base, a single, right? So the next guy hits the ball, and let's say the fielder catches it. So this guy catches it. But this guy started running. If he can slide into second and be touching second before this guy throws the ball and tag and to somebody to tag him, he's safe on second now. So he just basically stole second even though the guy you know, hit the ball. So at any time you can steal a base. You can start running again. So like if you're on first and you think the pitcher's an idiot, you can just run to second. But if he sees you running to second, now you're screwed because he can throw the ball to the, the uh, shortstop or the second baseman and they can tag you with the, with the, with the uh, glove before you get to second base, right? Or they can tag you before you get back to first base. You're only safe if you're on the bases. So that's what's going on whenever you hit it and it overruns. The, ball, the, the, little, pit, the little runner is running to here, but this guy gets the ball. Well, this guy could throw it to third base and if... If he tags you before you touch third base, you're out, right? So what he's doing is the little the little runner is going, ah, wait a minute, let me run back where he's safe. Absolutely incredible. I mean, I cannot believe they figured out how to do that in an EM pinball machine. Just, good Lord, how cool is that? Just amazing. Okay, so in the, in the earlier pitch and bat games, which, you know, a lot of people would prefer, to be honest, because they're, they're so cool with the running man unit in the background. The way that you, you just, like, you get a single, or, oh, you got a double, or, oh, you got a triple. Baseball's not really like that. What, what'll happen is you'll hit the ball, and it'll go right past the pitcher, and right past the second baseman or something, right? And this guy can't get it, and that guy can't get it. And now it's way out here, and they're running trying to get it, and you, you're, you've done ran to here, right? So you might make it, well, in that instance, you'd probably just stay on first, but let's say you hit a, you hit a fly and you start running to first, and this guy looks like he's going to catch it, and he misses the damn thing. And he misses it. He doesn't catch it, and it hits the ground. Well, you're, you're, you're not out. So you keep running, right? And now the thing's rolling to the wall, and the, the guy's running towards it. He's running for that damn ball, and you run past second, and he still hasn't got to the ball. And now you're rounding third, and it's so cool because the the uh, the the uh, the the, uh, the coaches there'll be a coach over here by third base, and he's going to try to he's he's trying to because when you're running, maybe you can't see where the ball is, you don't know what's going on. But this guy's standing here, and he's been watching it the whole time, right? So you've got a coach standing on third base, and he's 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 waving his hand like this, and he's telling you keep going, keep going. That that. That sucker ain't getting that ball right. And so the guy will run past third. And he'll get about here. And then the guy gets the ball. And he throws it. And he throws it as hard as he can, right? And it's coming. And the guy's running. And it's coming. And the catcher's standing here. And he's standing on the damn base, right? And this guy's thrown it perfect. And the catcher, the catcher's standing there waiting on the ball, right? And here the guy comes. And he'll just run right through the freaking catcher to try to make him drop the damn ball, right? And so the ball will get there. Boom, right when the guy's coming, right? And the guy will just tackle the guy trying to make the ball fall out of his glove or whatever, you know? But if he if the ball don't fall out of his glove, you're out, right? Or maybe he just barely makes it, you know? Or maybe maybe he sees it coming and he 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 jump he lands down on the ground and slides on his belly through the sand and puts his hand out and bam, just barely touches it before the, the ball gets there. So, there, you know, that's the passion of baseball. It's like, you know, just one of the coolest freaking sports ever. And they're trying to get that kind of feeling in the game. So they've got the, they went all out of their way to make it where the guy can run and then run back. Now, as we play it, you'll see instances where the guy's trying to run and the, the ball will end up over here and it'll, this little out light will come on. Gotcha, sucker, right, where he didn't make it. So they've actually designed into the game where you can overrun the bases. You can't steal the bases, but... Uh, you can get tagged out right at the base. Sometimes the ball will get lost and it's just up here and those guys will just run on home, right? And you'll hear that ding, ding every time somebody gets to home. Pretty cool game in my opinion. I think they did a good job with it. So 
let's see what we got here. I got a guy on first, no outs, and no strikes. Let me show you the strikes, too, that those work. So watch the guy on first, and I'll, I'll get a strike by swinging early and not hitting the ball. Okay? So it says strike one. The guy stayed there. See how my, my batter went right here? It probably shouldn't have even showed that because the guy, the, if the, if the, the uh, batter misses, he's not even going to try to run. So that's strike one. There's strike two. Now I'm going to strike out on purpose. One out. It says on the back glass. Okay, so that guy struck out. He couldn't even hit the freaking ball. Now the way they're telling that's happening is it's pitching and I'm hitting the bat button. So the bat relay's coming on and then the ball is hitting the catcher back here. Let's see what happens if I don't swing. Yeah, it did the same thing. So it doesn't need the, the bat relay. Okay, so let's see if we can get, uh, let's see if we can get the thing, um, let's see if we can see somebody get out, get caught out on a base. Okay, now the lights that are lit up are not the out lights, but there is a light right next to it that says out, out, out. It's a little confusing because they're the same color. Okay, so you see I hit the ball and it came over here and basically the first baseman ended up with it, but everybody stayed on their bases. Like we got one base out of it. This guy made it to there, that guy made it to there, and that guy made it to there. So everybody's safe. see the out so that guy was running for home and the ball ended up here and the, the baseman must have tagged him so he's out right so I got two outs now Whoop, missed it look oh come on so you saw the ball got to the catcher just as the guy was coming home and it got him, right? So now we're in inning two. Now, traditionally, of course, they would switch sides. So now the guys that were just batting would be out playing in the outfield and pitching and all of that. And I know some of you are like, oh, come on. Look, we don't know how to play baseball. No, I get, I get a lot of people watching our videos that have never played baseball. I want to get the out of the park thing like we did before. Ooh, that was a good one. So if you didn't see the earlier videos, there is a big gate right over here. So if the ball loops around and lands over here, it hits a switch and that's the first baseman has the ball. Okay. So basically, depending on where the people are on the field, the first baseman having the ball is either a problem or not a problem. But that's kind of how baseball works. The three little things here with the rubbers on them, if the ball hits them, they're angled in such a way that it throws the ball to the first baseman. Basically, from about here up is a big gate, like a big switch. And if the ball hits that, it's, it's so close that it immediately hits the switch. So the first baseman's got it. So if the ball hits that, it'll try to bounce it right over here. First base, baseman's got it. If the ball hits that, it'll try to bounce it over here. First baseman's got it. If the ball hits that, it'll try to bounce it over here. First baseman's got it. Behind each of these is a hole. So if the ball falls in there, basically that fielder has it. Second baseman, shortstop, and third baseman. But that doesn't necessarily mean you're out. It depends on where you're at on the play field. And see, like in that instance, that was essentially the ball went right by the first baseman kind of got out behind him here and then he finally got to it see that one was a perfect example the ball hit that then bounced over here to the first baseman and he got me out because I didn't make it to first base before he got the ball so that's one out inning two we've only got seven runs oh man 
Come on now. So the guy tried to go all the way home. Wasn't a good idea. So this is out two, inning two. Oh. So that's like a bunt. <laughs> so sometimes the pitcher will throw the ball and the guy will like, instead of swinging, he'll put his hands out and just barely tap the ball. So that's what just happened. The ball just kind of does this. Well, it screws everybody up because the catcher has to try to get it. And maybe he wasn't ready to get it. The pitcher can't get it. The guy on third is way too far away from him. The ball's just doing this, right? It's just bloop, 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 bloop. So the catcher has to run after it, and the guy got all the way to second before that happened. Because basically I didn't hit it very well, and it just, you know, rolled out a little bit. Now, if you... This game doesn't have uh, balls on it, or if the pitcher pitches it wrong, but normally, though, that would be considered a strike. So you hit it, and it rolls over here. If it's not in bounds... But on the on the diamond, that's a strike. Three strikes, you're out, sucker. Now on your third strike, that would not make you out because you're trying real hard. If you knock it up those sides, hmm, I think that messed up because I think the catcher had it. Okay, there we go. Yeah! <laughs> There's this song by, uh, what's his name? Uh, the guy from Credence Clearwater Revival, John Fogarty. Uh, center field. Put me in, coach. I'm ready to play today. Uh, look at me. I can play center field. And he says, uh, uh, to hit the ball and touch them all. A moment in the sun. That's his, that's his tribute to baseball. He says, to hit the ball and touch them all, right? So he hit the ball, and then he touched all four bases, baby. Out of the park. Oh, and then they got me out. So basically, I hit it way up in the stands, and the guy over in right field, bam, grabbed it out of the air, and you're out, sucker. Go back to the dugout. So we got ten runs, and it's inning three. All right. So the first baseman had it, and the guy was right here. Now, he could have tried to run a third, but what would have happened? The first baseman would have thrown the ball over to the third baseman, and he would have tagged him. Or he would have thrown it. I, I think that's the... I always get the shortstop and the second baseman mixed up. I think that's the second baseman. The second baseman, he could have thrown it to him, and he could have just tagged him as he ran by him. Sucker. All right. That are perfect example. It hit that and then right over to the first baseman. Oh, I missed it. Another one like that. And it got me out because it I hadn't got to the base yet. So in that instance, he got it, but you know, it went in the back part. Uh, and so he didn't have time to throw it to the first baseman took him a little longer to get it. Maybe it bounced on the ground a couple times before he got it. I'll tell you what, if you if you knock it up the sides, they don't get to it very easy. Okay, and so there was our there was our final one. It hit that one and bounced it straight over to the first baseman. So they're all aimed just right. Very cool. Think of the think of the trouble they went through to get that to work right. Oh, wow. Wow. So I knocked it right up the middle. Going for out of the park. We were trying to Babe Ruth it, but the center field guy caught it. He ran to the wall, and he jumped up, and it was just over the wall, and he put his glove over the wall and grabbed it right out of the stands, took it from me. Oh, man. Oh, and then he did it again. He did it again. All right, so there you go, folks. I got 15 runs. Um, and you, I, I set it up where you get three innings of play. They had it set on two innings of play. 
But you see, you get a little bit of time to play. Of course, I was talking the whole time, so that's that slowed it down. So I got 15 runs. That's not all that great. I guess in a real game it would be. That would be pretty good if you got 15 runs in three innings. Um, but yeah, there you go. I think it's a cool game. I like... A lot of people... They'll see this and they'll go, oh, it doesn't have the running man unit. No, I only like the ones that have the running man unit. But this was them trying to do something a little different. People automatically assume, oh, they were trying to make it cheaper. Well, I'm sure that was a byproduct. <laughs> it was cheaper. Um, but that meant they could sell it cheaper maybe too. So maybe a different operator could buy it that couldn't buy the ones that were bigger and had the running man unit and all that. And it's an interesting way of doing it. I mean, they came up with a kind of interesting concept. I've never seen one like this, so I don't know how successful it was. Um, but it gets an A for effort from me. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed all these videos here in December. You know, we, we did one a day. That's kind of hard to do. Um, but it was fun to do it. So leave your comments below. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. And we'll see you in the new year. We're going to keep making videos. We're not going to do them one a day, though. Um, you know, we can't do that every day. That's very hard to pull off. But we pulled it off for the entire month of December. We did a video every freaking day. And, oh, the quality was so high on them. Boy, they were great videos. I hope you enjoyed them. We're, tr we're just trying to... We're trying to uh, kind of get across the wonder of these machines, you know. These these things are, you can just walk by them and not notice how cool they are. But if you, if you study them a little bit and you think about the people that designed them, the people that built them, the factory it was built in, the, the engineers and what they must have been thinking, the purpose for doing that and all of that, it makes it so much more fun. So we, we're trying to just analyze them and... Uh, notice the coolness of them and appreciate it right on in Williams engineers I think you did a damn good job and another thing that we got to talk about well we don't have to talk about but that you have to keep in mind is that uh, this came out 52 years ago how old was the engineer that designed this was he 30 because if he was he's probably not with us anymore so you know we're kind of we're honoring the people that came before us by just looking at these awesome machines that they came up with. Now, some of you are completely on board, and you're thinking, man, yeah, this thing's cooler than anything that you can get now. And some of you, you're like, ah, this is kind of lame, it's old. But this is the foundation of, you know, modern, uh, uh, I guess there's not really that many modern coin-op games, but this, is, this predates, in 1970, home video game systems. So this is like the foundation of the, you know, the PlayStation 5 or whatever. This is how it started, stuff like this. Um, so I really appreciate it. I think they're cool as heck. I've always liked these things. I just, I love the idea that these buttons that I was talking about that we, that we cleaned up, right? And I said that we got them looking honorable or whatever, right? These buttons. How many times has a human being touched that button? Right? So you might get 10 at bats per inning. It was set on two innings. So every time you play it, you touch it 20 times at least. Um, and then people are, kids are walking up and playing it and all that. And look, this is the pitch one and this is the bat one. This one's more worn than that one, so I don't know what that's all about. But <laughs> it's just, to me, it's cool that so many people have like literally touched these things. Just the years and the people that this has seen. I mean, you could have had, maybe maybe uh, Elvis Presley played this thing. Maybe the Queen of England played this thing. We don't know, yeah. But this, this it was built by people at the Williams factory just to entertain you, make a couple quarters. And I think they did a freaking fine job, so. There you go, I hope you enjoyed it. Leave your comments below. Make sure to check out my brother Donnie, his channel here on YouTube. Uh, we do pinball machines, arcade games, jukeboxes, stuff like that. Donnie does old buildings, old cars, old vehicles, stuff like that. Uh, and I'm over there with him on his channel a lot, having a good time. So uh, check him out too. I'll see you over there. But we'll see you in the new year with many more great arcade games and pinball machines and jukeboxes. Hope you enjoyed it.